If I've titled this video right, there might be a few of you here trying to figure out exactly what you need to do with your door thresholds, especially when you've got a block and beam floor. This bit right here where the block finishes, there's a gap where your cavity is, and then you've got your outer skin. Now, after hours of research, I've realized that there's no conclusive way of properly dealing with this. I don't understand why there's no real definitive answer considering thousands of houses are built like this in the UK every year. I'm thinking in reality, it probably gets bodged because you get different trades doing different things, but I'm doing the whole lot, so I need to think about it properly. Let's talk you through the situation, why there's a problem in the first place, what the possible resolve is, but also why that might not actually be the answer. Out of skin, you've got your damp course there. Down here, you've also got a damp course, and that's where your blocks and beams sit on, and then they've cut it back to here, and you're left with this gap here. That is the cavity closer on the end. There's no cavity closer here because there's no inner block. You could possibly brick this up and then put a cavity closer in there. I don't think that's the dumb thing with a block and beam floor. I might be wrong. You could then pop a cavity closer down the bottom, which would resolve part of the issue, but I don't think that really works. So my insulation needs to go on here, and then there's a gap underneath. So if you can imagine that, and then you'll have your perimeter insulation, which is normally 25. So there's just a void underneath there. I did ask on a Facebook group, a couple of people said to bridge that bit with slate. I'm not really sure why that really makes a difference. Uh, a few people said to fill it with MOT type one. I think that is one of the bodge options. I have done this before. I did do an extension. I did have a block and beam floor. I did have this gap at the end. And what I had done is I lined it with DPM and then I filled it with concrete. I did have a conversation with a building inspector about this particular issue, and at the time, the only thing that he could think of doing is the same as what I had done before. Line it with DPM like a pocket and stick concrete in it. That resolves the issue of the unsupported insulation. But once I've taken this shit out, lined it with DPM, filled it with maybe lean mix, stuck that there and put that there, I then need to fit my doors. These doors here, I'm fitting them not someone else so maybe there's some kind of massive secret about how to properly deal with this but there's an issue with thermal bridging which means that you're supposed to in fact set the doors 30 mil back into the cavity i found a handy pdf all about thermal bridging there is a section all about your windows and your reveals and how it's best to use cavity closers, etc. Certainly about 30 mil. If you want to see that, let me know. I'll email it to you. In terms of setting your frames back 30 mil into the cavity, that's also in the building regulations. Whilst undertaking my research, I found this particular drawing that details where the seal sits on the outer skin, that there's a 30 mil overlap, and how you would fix, in this particular case, through the thermal break into the brick below. Can you see the problem? Now, if you can get your seal on there, drill through with a concrete screw or even a framing screw and get your... That, that's, that's, not, that's never going to happen, is it? Never, in a million years. If you can get that to work, then you should be playing the lottery every single week. The manufacturer's recommendations for my particular seals don't recommend that you go through the thermal break. They have specified exactly where you should be drilling through, something I've looked up in the technical manuals. I've got a couple of seals here for the doors. This one is for an inner opening one. So for this one, I need to drill through here to fix it through. And from here to here is 30 mil. So that is right on the edge of the brick. And then for this one, here's the thermal break here. I need to drill through that one. That one is outward opening, and from here to here is 30 mil, so it's on the edge of the brick as well. So I'm thinking circumstances like this, the window fitters, I don't think that those they fit the doors with a 30 mil overhang into the cavity. I just can't see it happening. I reckon they do it flush with the brickwork. And in terms of like thermal bridging, I don't know, does it even really matter? Does it really matter? I don't know. Now I'm sure I'm overthinking this, but can you see where I'm coming from? Surely there's a way of fixing this issue down here, being able to set back your f seal 30 mil and get a proper fix in and also resolve any issues with thermal bridging. But for the life of me, I can't figure it out. I really can't. On my windows, I don't have a problem because I've got an inner skin. I've got a cavity closer there. 
the seal can sit back 30 mil and I can actually use fixing straps on these, this particular seal, so I can fix on here. So I don't have a fixing issue. So I did think, should I just build another inner skin here, put a cavity closer in there, but that needs to be structural. And according to Google, it seems there's only one company that does a structural cavity closer. And I'm just not convinced. I'm really not convinced because I want that seal to be solid. I mean, a seal that slightly flexes might be all right on this door and it might be all right on these French doors. But I've got my doubts about triple bifolds and there's no bloody way I would risk a flexing seal on bifolds this size. So the way I see it, I've got two options. I can either move the doors forward so they're flush with the back of the brick and that 100 mil and I've got no overlap into the cavity or I make that threshold thicker. So granted, I'd have thermal bridging down the bottom potentially but not at the sides and not at the top. So what's better? Three out of four or none out of four? I'll have insulated plasterboard around all the reveals, that's sides and top, but nothing at the bottom. But I just can't think of a different way of dealing with this. Can you? So here's the plan. I've cleaned out down here. In an ideal world, these blocks would have been cut bang on straight. It's just all over the shop, basically. So I bought 50 mil of insulation, which I will be cutting down and placing on the back edge here. I will wrap that in DPM. I will then use my cement mixer with ballast and cement to fill this void in here. And in the top 100 mil or so, I'll do a mix with sharp sand. So I've got no issues with any fixings going in. In theory, that's going to leave me with 140 mil threshold that I can fix to and I shouldn't have any problems. The only slight issue is a little bit of thermal bridging. So what do you reckon then? Do you make me right? This is one of the things that was actually holding me up because one, I didn't know how to deal with it and two, the weather wasn't good enough to actually do it once I figured out what to do. Gets on my nerves, it's getting dark so bloody early. I think I've only got like 20 minutes of daylight left. So I'm gonna cut the insulation, I'll line everything out sort out all of the thresholds and then tomorrow I'll be back with you and we'll do a little bit of concreting. I didn't do any concreting yesterday because I knew it was going to rain in the afternoon so I set up a few things. Everything's ready, I cut down the insulation, I also cut down the DPM so it was the right size and because there was gaps at the bottom of the cavity closers I've put some DPC around that bit and taped it in place just so the concrete doesn't go underneath. Just to show you I've got my insulation it's wrapped in DPM and then we're going to jam it in here hopefully. And then to keep the insulation from slanting like that and I end up with a wedge of concrete I've got these blocks wooden blocks and I'll just push them in. It doesn't matter if there's these stay in there. So that gives it a proper gap for the concrete to go in. Just to explain exactly what's happening, hopefully I've knocked up a detail in Photoshop for you. So I've popped in the insulation and the backside, that's wrapped with DPM. The plan is to fill that void with concrete at the front. If I can get the insulation out, I'm gonna then fill that little gap with more concrete and then place the perimeter insulation, which is 25 mil, 150 mil floor insulation. If I can't get the insulation back out, I will leave it in place, but Instead of leaving that top edge at 50 mil, which is a little bit too much, I might cut it down flush with the current block and beam floor and then go with the 25 mil and then with the 150 mil. And because I knew I was doing concrete, and I thought I'd sort out the base for the air source heat pump. For that, I cut down some scaffold boards, screwed them together, and then I cut out some steel mesh. I've put that in place and filled it a little bit with rubble just so I don't have to mix up quite as much concrete. The base of the air source heat pump, I believe it's 900 by 400. So I've done this a meter and a half by 900. And I've done it that big because the very first thing that I ever done on site and the first video that I ever filmed, I done the base for my electrical kiosk, which isn't much bigger than the kiosk. This pole is pretty much bang on upright and that's now on the wonk. Just to let you know, these doors are being done differently. This is the plant room. So this threshold, what I'm gonna do is leave it like that. 
just do the pocket, fill that bit with concrete and then insulate as normal. The reason why that is because I've got steel security doors. The U values on them are not the greatest. There's no thermal break or anything, but that room is a sealed off room, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not planning on setting them back 30 mil into the cavity. Arthur's joining us for concrete in. Arthur, you, you got your shovel? Where's your shovel? <laughs> First mixes are going to be four to one, that's four ballast, one cement. And then after that, we're going to go for a four to one with sharp sand. That's just for the top, say, 50 mil. Once I pull the insulation out and I want to fill that little gap next to the blocks, I'm going to do a lean mix, which will be, say, eight to one with ballast and cement. Look at this little monkey. <laughs> It's a couple of days later, Saturday I had a rest up, Sunday, which was yesterday, I really wasn't well. Still not 100% today really, but we're gonna have a quick look. We'll check out the base first. This looks pretty decent. That looks all right, eh? There's a little gap around the bottom. That doesn't really matter. It's gonna be filled with gravel around here. This bit's slightly higher, so I need to put an edge on that. Solid. So now to the threshold. Well, I've had a look at this the other day already, so I kind of know what I'm going to be looking at. But I would say the principle and the theory behind this was sound. The execution was a bit poor, really. I should have taken more time to think about it. I just thought I'd bang it out and this would be the quickest way to deal with it but I might have given myself a little bit more work than I really needed to. I'll show you what I mean. So this over here, this is what I was aiming for. That is 40 mil extra but down this side it slowly edges out and here it's almost 60 mil. So I think what's happened is the block and beam Obviously that, that wasn't even anyway, regardless. And the insulation, 50 mil, it wasn't quite stiff enough. I'm not sure exactly what's happened, whether this side has just leaned out. I did try it with a big oak block and a concrete block to push it back in. This small one kind of looks okay and even. That's 50 mil throughout, I think. The long one is kind of okay. It's a little bit troublesome because I had two joins in the um, insulation. So I had to put a load of blocks there to keep it from flapping back and this one again i tried to put some weight behind it just to stop it slanting back and getting the wedge that's pretty much even another issue i had with the uh, dpm because i was doing it on my own you see these like little folds obviously that's translated into the concrete as well so i don't know how that's going to turn out i think what i should have done in fact is got some ply and shuttered it and then i could have got the exact thickness that i wanted all the way across and uh yeah it just would have been better i think it would have been better no, i don't think that's coming out is it <laughs> uh, no nah, it's not going anywhere okay let's cut it down then I'm gonna say overall, I'm a bit disappointed. Disappointed in myself, really. <laughs> uh, it was easier to get that insulation out with a multi-tool as well. That was much easier. Right, this side is fine. This is how I wanted it to turn out up to about here. So that's 40 mil thick, pretty straight, 
all good and then this half just goes off that way which has made the upstands a lot thicker so that's all good there and then that's how much it goes off so that's 15 20 mil and that's mostly because of that block and beam has gone off on this end the short one's relatively even throughout that is a bit thicker it's about 50 mil but that doesn't necessarily matter because if i set the doors back 50 mil into the cavity so if i lined up the back with here you get even better thermal values out of it so i don't know whether i will be doing that i my doors are about just over 80 mil thick so i could do that possibly this is the issue i was talking about you see how that waves and that's because of the dpm it wasn't like stretched properly the long one's kind of okay it does bow out here that's where two boards join because i couldn't obviously do the full length again i've got the the marks where the plastic sheet were that doesn't necessarily matter i might need to i need to take a grinder to this back edge because there's a tiny lip that goes up this one isn't too bad it's pretty even throughout it does have the little ridges but i suppose that doesn't really matter too much what i really want to do is get a grinder on this and cut it back so it's 140 throughout but i think that's just going to take too much time and maybe i just need to accept that i've bodged it a bit what would you do it does perform the function that i need it to in terms of fully supporting the seal and then that means i can drop back the frame so i've got better thermal qualities when you think about it none of this is going to be seen so it doesn't really matter about the form anyway all it means is my dpm that's going to go there rolls over the top thicker dpc there i get my 25 mil perimeter insulation then my floor insulation which will go there and it just means that for my floor insulation i'm going to have to cut it at a slight angle from one side to the other and that doesn't really matter does it plus i'll have slightly worse thermal bridging just there in comparison to this side but it's on the floor anyway i'm not sure that really matters too much if i could turn back <coughs> if i could turn back time <laughs> <laughs> this is what i would do i would drop 18 or 22 mil ply into that section at the appropriate distance depending on how thick you want your threshold i would then keep that in place with some made up say triangle l brackets out of wood that i would concrete screw to the block and beam floor that would keep it in place in order for the concrete not to stick to it in the first place it might be okay but maybe some releasing agent on the front fill that section with concrete remove the plywood line the bottom section with dpm fill that with lean mix at an eight to one mix that's eight ballast one cement full dpm everywhere 25 mil insulation 150 mil insulation screed sorted job done why didn't i bloody do that in the first place you live and you learn eh i'll, I'll have to do it for next time i'm gonna leave it there if you haven't already give us a thumbs up thanks for watching i'll see you later